It's a tough thing to watch from thousands of miles away. Asya Abdul Hadi's home is being destroyed. Both sides have to stop. There has to be a ceasefire. She fears for her family still in Gaza. She calls them first thing every morning, knowing the borders are closed and that they are trapped. I either call on Viber or text. She says, are you OK? And what they tell me, well, thank God we're still alive. Still alive, her nephew Mohammed stands on his balcony in the center of Gaza and shows her a home across the street. You see the behind me? His neighbor lost both his legs in a missile strike, and he fears he, his wife, or his newborn baby will be next. You are going uh, to be awake every time because you are afraid they are going to bomb this building again. As a Palestinian, Abdul Hadi sees Hamas as a resistance movement. I don't want any civilian lives to be lost on both sides, but, but the side that is losing the most and inflicted the most is the Palestinian side. Experts say the strikes on Israel are useless in part because of the Iron Dome defense system and Hamas needs to put its focus elsewhere. Hamas has been focused more on the struggle, the struggle with Israel and the struggle for Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, rather than doing something about the day-to-day -day life of the population. The unemployment rate is 40 percent in Gaza. Professor Jonathan Edelman says if Hamas and Gaza want to succeed, they have to meet the basic needs of the people first. They want food, they want clothing, they want shelter, they want to be part of the global economy. For now, attacks continue, and Abdul Hadi will continue praying for the worst part to end. Is not knowing if they're going to live the second minute or not.